Fire Nation in the house, JLD here. And welcome to episode 1960 of EO Fire, where I chat with entrepreneurs on fire seven days a week. Productivity, discipline, focus, Fire Nation, those are my three greatest strengths. They can be yours too. Just visit themasteryjournal.com and master all three skills in 100 days. Now let's chat with today's featured guest, Kelsey Ramsden. Kelsey, are you prepared to ignite? Heck yes! Yes. A globally recognized, award-winning serial entrepreneur, author, and advisor, Kelsey builds multi-million dollar businesses and helps others do the same. She is a status quo smasher, E3 master, cancer survivor, and mom of three. Kelsey, take a minute, fill in some gaps from that intro and give us just a little glimpse of your personal life. Yeah, sure. It's funny. Uh, how do I follow my own intro? That sounds uh, pretty good. <laughs> I, yeah, what you don't know about me is my kids are all under the age of 10, which means I live beyond in chaos and at work, but in chaos altogether. <laughs> People are often like, how do you do it? I'm like, I don't really know. Someday in the future, I'll look back and wonder the same thing. But mostly (laughs) it's just keeping all the balls in the air, right? We all, every entrepreneur is just doing that no matter what's going on. So I think uh, I'm at the beginning of of an even more hectic time. Um, And I I think what's, what's kind of coming to light for me now with having multiple businesses, multiple children, all these kind of things on the go is this idea, what you talked about in the intro is just focus and clarity. Like, how do you actually have the whole thing, the whole enchilada, the whole life, um, and not fall into the rut of just getting by, just getting along? So besides keeping all the balls in the air at all times, what else are you an expert in? Like business-wise specific, like what's your area of highest expertise? I think it's taking really tangled, messed up situations, things that seem ultra complex, simplifying it and finding a solution that's implementable, not just, you know, strategic kind of consulting type stuff, but how do we actually get this done and untangled quick? That's what I'm really great at. Problem solving, innovation type things. Let's get tactical for a second. Like what specifically can we as an entrepreneur do that can help us in this area? I mean, this is your area of expertise. So give us like one Mm -hmm. specific tactic, tool, method help us. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the E3. Is this, is this a cool time to talk about that? Well, if you can keep it concise, let's do it. 100 P. So the long and short of what happens is we're all successful in our own right, right? We're good at the thing that we do. We get better at that. We start a business doing it over time. We do it the same way because we know it works. Yeah. Then what happens is that thing keeps working, but not quite as well. We get bored. We get mundane. We need to solve a bigger problem, right? The old saying about like what got you here won't get you there, but we keep doing what got us here. And so what E3 does, and and we could talk about it a bit more later, um, is it brings our mind to the present, reignites us in the thing that we're exceptional at doing, and re-enlivens our mind to pay attention again. Because we all go into these kind of default futures of our business and our lives without even recognizing it. Because it's what we did successfully, so we kind of without knowing sit on our laurels. So what I would say to all the entrepreneurs listening about how do you tactically shift into um, solving the most challenging problems, it's to re-enliven your awareness, come alive again, remember what it is that you're good at and change something. And it's really about that changing something with focus and clarity. It's it's the fastest way to a solution that demands results. Fire Nation, we're meant to always be moving. We're meant to always be changing and evolving. I mean, try to stand up straight and not move. I mean, your body is always adjusting. There's like these little tiny adjustments. I'm standing up right now. Luckily, I'm on an anti-gravity mat, so it's really good for my back. And I love all of these things, but you can't just stay still. You have to keep moving, evolving, whether that be in life, in business, whatever it is, keep moving on moving. Now, Kelsey, I want to talk about your worst entrepreneurial moment. So I know it's a tough memory, but take us to the moment that you consider your worst of all time and tell us that story. It's disguised as the best moment of all time. uh, But for me, it was the worst. So when I started my business, my first business is construction business. So I built roads, bridges, dams, airports, that kind of thing. And I had no money. In fact, I was like 112,700 and some odd dollars in debt. So how I built that was I I found joint venture partners and said, hey, look, here's what I have a a bunch of skill and talent. I'll do all the work. 
Uh, I'll split the profit with you 50-50. You do nothing but help finance me. And so a lot of people are like, you're crazy. Why don't you just take debt financing? And But that wouldn't work because I was so in debt. No one would lend me any money. So I worked out this way to do it. So I'm growing my business, growing my business, growing my business this way. And I get to be pretty big. And one day this guy comes to me and says, how about I do all the work? Like he does all the work and I get 50% of the profit. And I thought, oh my God, I have made it now. Now I'm the other guy. I'm the big guy with all the money and the reputation. And now these little guys are coming to me because I've got it made. And my ego went bliss. My ego just had a feastable. It was like, it was like a heyday thirst quench. And even though my gut said this guy was probably not stable and probably didn't know how to do the work and all manner of other things, my gut was just like, warning, warning. Uh, I did not listen. And so we went into this joint venture contract, which went so terribly wrong that we lost over a million dollars in a period of six months. We had times on our construction site where people had guns pulled. We, I, it wound up in a situation with me across the table from six lawyers in the end. And on the outside at that moment, when I, when I made this deal with the guy, it looked like I was just killing it. I was winning all these international awards for growing businesses and all this stuff. But the worst moment truly was after that day in arbitration with all these lawyers going back to my hotel room and, and literally just breaking down in tears. And truth be told, I bought a package of cigarettes. I don't even smoke. I just was at (laughs) the end of the whole show. And I just realized I may have the skill and the capacity and all these things, but my greatest weakness is my ego. It was so humiliating. Okay. So I'm going to take the lowest hanging fruit here. I'm going to say, you know, listen to your gut, follow your your intuition, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. What specifically, Kelsey, can you tell Fire Nation, like something that's really going to be helpful that you wish you had known or you wish you had done looking back now in hindsight? Know myself better. I think it's easy for us to think about our our weaknesses as these things that are on checkboxes, like, oh, I'm not great at finance or I can't read a cash flow statement or, you know, uh, really sometimes your greatest weaknesses are like those things that you just hate to admit. And we all know what they are deep down. I mean, maybe that's a bit woo woo, but the truth is like ego is a strong thing, my friend, you know? Well, it is a bit woo woo. So get a little more tactical by just sharing, like maybe what's one way that you got to know yourself better? Like what's something you specifically did that helped? I would say the thing that's most specific and tactical that a person can do is ask the people who are not going to bullshit you, excuse my language, but ask the people who are going to tell you straight up, what is the one thing that you see in me that I don't see in myself? That's negative because people know you well, you know, and we don't often want to ask that question. We say, how do we look in these jeans? You know, we don't say, (laughs) tell me the thing that you see that I do terribly wrong. Um, And had I done that, you know, candidly, had I done that beforehand, not just with my friends, but with people who work for me and allowed them to be honest, I'm sure they would have told me what it was. Fire Nation, give permission to your friends, to your family, to your loved ones to be honest with you because they're not going to go out of your way because nobody likes that unsolicited, you know, critical, constructive criticism. We don't like it. But when we ask for it, we're giving permission and we're, you know, we're putting ourselves mentally in a state to receive it for what it's meant, which is, hey, like you've asked for it and I'm giving it to you because you've asked for it. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. Here it is. So have those conversations with your loved ones. Now, Kelsey, I'd love to kind of shift conversations here and start talking about one of the greatest ideas you've had to date. You've obviously had a lot of aha moments. What's a special one that you want to share with us and walk us through how you turned that idea into success? I'm going to take you back to a place where I'm running lots of businesses. Yeah, I've got all these kids um, and our youngest, who was at that point two months old, uh, I was traveling across the country. It was a crazy time. In any event, I got diagnosed with cancer. And um, I had to put my companies into management because uh, my diagnosis had a 17% survival rate. So I figured uh, the outcome was likely going to reflect that percentage and I would be on the wrong side of that. So um, what happened was put these companies into management I wound up surviving. I'm still alive in here and well to talk about it five years later. 
But my big aha moment that I turned into success was recognizing that I have a really specific skill set and I can grow businesses to a certain size. And then it turns out other people are a hell of a lot better at doing it than I am. And I think for every entrepreneur, knowing that there's a there's a bandwidth where you're the best and then there's a bandwidth where someone else is. And so the idea that came out of that that was that I turned into success for me was to know what I do really well and hand it over to other people. And I mean, it sounds a bit cliche, like surround yourself with great people. But I add surround yourself with great people at the right time. I think this really helps Fire Nation um, with the last piece of advice that we gave is go to family, to friends, to loved ones and ask them, what do I do really well? Because again, they might not just come out and say that because they think that maybe you already know that or they're stroking your ego or whatever. But it's important for you to know that because we have what's called the curse of knowledge. We just assume because something comes easy to us or we know something that other people know as well. And totally. not all the time that is the case. So just like you're going to ask people for honest, constructive feedback, like ask people, like, how would you finish this sentence? What is John good at? Like, what is he good at? Like, how would you finish that sentence? Like, just make that happen. And then boom, you're off to the races by getting great feedback. So what is that one thing that you, Kelsey, want to make sure our listeners get from your aha moment? I want to make sure that you get that you're likely that really terrific at something for a given period of time, but you have to look around you and be honest about when you're no longer the best at that thing, be okay with hanging, handing it over. Really be okay with it. Even if it's your entire business, I did it and everything got more profitable and allowed me to go on and do other more interesting things for Mm. me at that time. But I thought I was so entrenched and fixed in this thing and it was so dependent on me. And in the end, it only needed me for a period of time to do what I do best. And then it was time for me to exit. Set it free, Fire Nation. And by setting that free, you're also setting yourself free for other opportunities. Now, what are you most excited about today, Kelsey? Since you set yourself free, what has that led you to? Oh, my gosh. So I'm going to circle back to the E3, but um, I'm going to give you a tiny bit of context. So I've told you know a good part of my story, but imagine that I have all these businesses. We're making good money. My family's going great. Uh, on the outside, everything looks amazing, but internally, I feel terrible, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but I think a lot of... It's the kind of thing that I talk about a lot of times at cocktail parties with a person in the corner who's not willing to talk about it in public. So anyone who's listening, I invite you, even if you're uh, externally very successful, but you're yet you're feeling kind of stagnant or status quo or stuck in a rut, this this one's for you because that's how I felt. Um, and it felt terrible to admit it. Like, how do you say I'm doing all these amazing things and I'm winning awards and I'm traveling around the world, but I feel super unsatisfied? Um And so I took some time and I looked at what is it that I'm not doing? Where am I status quo? What's my rut? What's going on here? And I did a lot of studying and reading of scientific journals and trying to understand how our mind is wired up. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, the, the, The thing I'm fired up about is how to reignite your mind for aha and innovation. Like how do you reignite your passion for something, which is usually that, like we talked about, that one thing you do really well. So even the successful become mediocre at our own level, right? You get so high and then you kind of go along and and what's the next thing? Because the higher up you get, no one's going to set new hoops for you, are they? You know, it used to be that you did this and then you did that. The higher up you get, it's harder to define what's next. So I wanted to figure out how we bring our minds out of default, right? And how do we stock our mental shelves with the things that are going to be able to have us have those kind of TSN turning points, those big aha moments, Uh. And what I discovered was this. So, John, are you cool if I do a little exercise with you? Let's do it. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. You don't have to answer out loud. In fact, maybe it's better if you don't. So let's let everyone do it along with us. So anyone who's listening can do this too, okay? Okay, Red. Okay. So um, think about something that you know, like you know it really well. Think, Think of something you know. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Now think about something that you remember something you remember. Cool. Yeah. Okay, great. So now I'm going to do the mind reader part. So the thing that you know, is it something that you could teach to someone else or that you were taught? Great. And I currently do teach it. Yeah. Okay. Groovy. So the thing that you remember, I'm going to guess it has a couple of tags to it. Okay. So imagine your mind like a, a library with all these shelves in it and different things get stocked. All right. 
And when you stalk a library shelf, you tag it with something. It's got a tag on the outside so you can find it. So I'm going to guess that thing you remember has the following tags. One, there's an emotion involved. Maybe it's love or fear or lust or something. Is there emotion? Yeah. Great. The second thing is, could you repeat it the exact same way twice? Probably not. No. I actually just tried to think about how I was going to say it and it kind of changed. There you go. And the third thing is, did you share it with another human being? That is to say whether or not they were there with you or afterwards you looked someone in the eye and told them about this memory, this thing. Yes. Cool. So here's why I did that. It's not because I can read your mind from around the world or anything wild and wonderful. It's because of how we stock our mental shelves. And here's the thesis. The thesis is that the things that we stock, let's let's use the uh, the analogy of a library and shelves. If we stock it at eye level, we see it most, it's the most easily accessible, yeah? The things in our mind that get stocked at eye level have those three tags in them. So it's a lot easier for us to remember a memory that has those things, emotion, hard to repeat twice in the exact same way, and that you shared it with a person, than it is something you read in a magazine or something you were taught. And so the way to re-enliven your mind, to stock some new things on your mental shelves, is to strategically put yourself in the way of those environments, which we very rarely do. We very rarely go out and engage in high emotion, things we've never done before and could never do the same way again. And because of the way that we share our lives now ever more often, we rarely share those things with another human being. And that's not to say that knowledge isn't useful, but it's not as directly uh, applicable or pullable off the shelf in those moments where you have to solve a problem or break some kind of rut. And so the idea behind the E3 is that you have emotion, experience, and explanation tagged together to re-enliven your mind. And what you do when you do that over and over and over again is, okay, I'm going to ask you this. When you Let's say you drive somewhere. Have you ever driven somewhere and got there and thought, I don't remember making that left turn? Yes. Yeah, totally. So that's because our minds go into default when we repeat actions and thought processes over and over and over again. It, they just It's like bzz, test pattern because it knows what it's doing. It doesn't need you to be at full attention. But what we need to do is to bring our minds to full attention of our whole lives in order to re-engage in what it is that makes us truly successful and see solutions and opportunities that are often right in front of us. Fire Nation, from the freezing plains of Canada all the way down to the warm, sunny beaches of the Caribbean, Kelsey is dropping value bombs. And guess what? More are coming up in the lightning rounds when we get back from thanking our sponsors. If you're looking for the perfect spot for your next client or team meeting, then you don't have to look very far. Da Vinci can help. Their new mantra, search, book, meet. With Da Vinci, it's that simple because they offer incredibly affordable meeting rooms in well-known office locations in every city. That means if you need to set up a meeting with a client face-to-face or bring your team together for a brainstorming session, all you have to do is search, book, and meet. Da Vinci has conference rooms, boardrooms, training spaces, you name it. The right room you need when you need it is just a few clicks away. Say you're based in Phoenix, but you need to meet with a client in New York, skip the coffee shop meeting and get a Da Vinci meeting room instead. It's fast, affordable, comes with high-speed internet and presentation tools, and it all starts at just $10 an hour. For a limited time, visit davincimeet.com slash fire for 50% off your first purchase. Terms and conditions apply. See davincimeet.com slash fire for details. Kelsey, are you ready to rock the lightning rounds? Let's do it. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? A belief that entrepreneurs weren't as good as people in corporate. What's the best advice you've ever received? Only make a deal if you feel good about it, never mind what the other person is getting. What's a personal habit that contributes to your success? Shaking up the status quo on the everyday. Recommend one internet resource. It's futurism.com. It's by far my favorite way to blow my mind daily. But you can couple that with the NASA just to see some images that'll do the same thing. Recommend one book and share why. Okay, so I'm, I'm stoked about this book. It's called Driven, uh, The Understanding and, Har- Understanding and Harnessing the Genetic Gifts Shared by Entrepreneurs, Navy SEALs, and Pro Athletes. So I brought it out so I could actually read that because I never get it right. I just say driven. But the book is by two guys. This guy is a double PhD 
and the other guy is a former Navy SEAL sniper, one of the best ever, apparently. And what they have figured out is a way for um, effectively type A and these these uh, highly active people, which are usually entrepreneurs, to calm our minds and focus. And what's super cool is, and I'm actually, I'm going down to do a thing with them in a week's time, which I'm really excited about. And what they have you do is you sit down and you meditate. First of all, you fire some guns at some targets, which sounds like a good time. Then you sit down and meditate. Then you refire. And what they've shown is that through this very specific type of meditation that's explained in the book, you can focus your energy to such a degree you can go from entirely unable to hit a target to so laser focused and charged up that you can shoot like a Navy SEAL. And it's not that I love shooting guns, it's that I love being ultra primed and focused. And I've never been able to actually calm my mind. Everyone's like, meditate, meditate. I can't stand it. But this is absolutely transformed, like totally. Three weeks, I've been doing it. It's totally, it's a game, game changer. Kelsey, let's end it today on fire with you giving us a parting piece of guidance, sharing the best way that we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Cool. So the best way to connect with me is just at Kelsey Ramsden, generally on Instagram or at on Twitter. You can hit me up on my website at KelseyRamsden.com. And my parting piece of advice was to not allow the status quo to become stasis. You know, even the most successful become mediocre at their own levels. And I would just challenge everyone to recognize where is it that you've fallen asleep at the wheel and you have to come to life again. Get, and, and just and just do it because life is passing us by so quickly. And what it is that you know is so valuable and useful. Just bring it to your attention and you can change everything. Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with and you have been hanging out with KR and JLD today. So keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. Just type Kelsey in the search bar. Her show notes page will pop up with everything that we've been talking about today. These are the best show notes in the biz. Timestamps, links, you name it. Of course, head directly to KelseyRamsden.com for all that's going on over there. And Kelsey, thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Hey, Fire Nation, hope you enjoyed our chat with Kelsey today. And I've created five courses so that you can master productivity, accomplish goals, crush Kickstarter, create funnels, podcasts, and webinars that actually convert. And they're free, Fire Nation, F-R-E-E. And they're waiting for you at eofire.com. I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side.